welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Derwent Light Fast Pencils. Probably more than a year ago now, I did an unboxing and first impressions on these pencils. And today I'm going to be doing a full review on these pencils. So I've had time to play with them, try them on a variety of surfaces, as well as with a variety of blending mediums and solvents. So I really have an idea of what works best. I'm going to be taking a really close and comprehensive look at these pencils. And I'm going to be giving my very, very honest review. Now, there are a lot of things that I like about these pencils, and there are some things that, to be completely honest, I don't like so much about this pencil, and we're going to be taking a look at what those things are. I will definitely give them their credits where credit is due and where they deserve it, and we'll go over their pros and cons and what I think their strong points are. Now, I've been kind of putting off this review for a little while because, to be completely honest, I was a little afraid of the backlash that I might receive since I'm going to be giving my very honest thoughts and not all of them are going to be entirely favorable. This is a pencil that I feel has been really hyped up for a long time and I wanted to let some of that hype die down a little bit before I gave my review because, you know, sometimes when it comes to art supplies, particularly the color pencils I noticed, there is a cult following and when you go against um, sort of the the knowledge or you go against the, the perception that's being passed around in a popular way, sometimes people don't like that so much. So I've got some notes off to the side. I've done, I've completed several pieces with these already, but I sold them and I don't have them to show you all today, but I've got some um, examples here. I've got the full color range. Um, now this is in a reflective bag for the moment. I will zoom out and I'll show it to you. I keep my color swatches um, in a archival safe bag so that, um, and it's crystal clear so that I can refer to them, but I'll take it out of that bag so you can see. And we're gonna talk about how they blend. We'll talk about light fastness, the consistency of these pencils versus the consistency of other pencils like Polychromos, for example, which are said to also be an oil-based color pencil. And I have done a full review on my channel on those pencils, so I'll leave that linked up as well if you're interested um, in case you were trying to decide between the two. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and jump right into it. So when I received these pencils, they were sort of um, a gift to myself, I believe, for my birthday. I can't remember the exact instance of how I required these, but I got the full 100 wood box set. Let me go ahead and zoom out and show you the color range. All right, so here it is. You're currently looking at the full 100 color range of the Derwent Light Fast Pencils. In a moment, I'll bring in the swatches of the Polychromo so that you can compare color ranges in case that's something that you wanted to see or if it made a difference to you. Now, I would like to say briefly that I am an artist and an art enthusiast, but YouTube is not my job. It's my hobby. I don't make money off this channel, so in case that matters to you, because I think it does influence people's opinions, um, you should know that it's my hobby, not my job, and I'm not making money off this, so I'm free to say whatever I like. I bought these with my own money, um, as always with everything that you see on the channel. Now, there are a lot of things that I like about this color selection. Many of the colors, like the reds, for example, are somewhat muted and a little bit subdued. They're very natural looking. I had some comments on that original unboxing video. People were saying, well, I'll take note that because they're natural pigments, they're not going to be as bright as synthetic dyes, yada yada. I'm very aware of that. Um, I've been an artist for a long time. In fact, I'm very familiar with pigments. I used to make my own oil paints at some times. I work in acrylic, pastel, watercolor, pretty much every medium you can think of. And I'm, I know exactly what these pigments are. So that's not the issue. I'm aware of that. But there are brighter, light fast pigments available. Um, now that doesn't that's not to say they should be brighter, um, because it's a personal preference thing. You know, for example, when you take a look at some of these reds versus the reds here, you can clearly see these popped more in the polychromos. I'm not sure I trust the light fastness of polychromos anymore, um, because I've seen some reviews that were less than favorable in terms of light fastness of these. So I think this is going to be another video for the light fast testing series here on the channel. We're going to, I'm going to have to check myself because now I don't trust them. So this is a swatch of Winsor & Newton watercolors and most of the pigments here are completely and totally light fast. Here is Winsor Red, which is a pyrrole red, which I know Karen Dosh Luminance is using in their red pencil, so it's possible to make it in pencil form. And you can see how much brighter and more vibrant that is. Now, 
listen, that's personal preference. I'm not going to discredit the pencils for that, but it's something that you should be aware of if you want very bright, bold colors. Another thing that I notice is that for me, one of the biggest disadvantages of these pencils is that, do you know how sometimes a chocolate bar will, will over time an aged chocolate bar will get kind of a frosting on it? It's kind of like a white film or a white fog over the chocolate frosting, uh, the chocolate bar, like a frosting. I'm sure there's a technical name for that, but I'm not sure what it is. Upon further research, I've discovered that it's called chocolate bloom. However, it would be incorrect to refer to this as wax bloom, since wax bloom is actually something that happens when layering multiple layers of a waxy colored pencil and you get a bloom of wax on the surface of your artwork. Well, this is some kind of bloom. Maybe we should coin the phrase pencil bloom, um, although this is happening on the paper as well. So it's some kind of bloom. All I know is that I don't like it. These pencils kind of have that, and I've not really ever experienced that with any other brand before. The swatches as well as the pencils, and I've left these ones here in my pencil caddy intentionally so that I could zoom in and show you what I meant. Okay, so here is an intense close-up, and it's really hard to show this on camera, so I'm not sure how well it will show, but do you see that kind of white fog? It almost looks like mold, possibly. It absolutely is not mold. There's nothing wrong with the pencil, but I do believe that's oxidization of some sort. Again, I'm really hoping that you can see this. Do you see that white kind of fog? It's so hard to show on camera, and for whatever reason, I don't think the camera's picking it up well. There's nothing wrong with the pencil, but that kind of fog or residue or whatever that is developed over time. I'm pretty sure that's just oxidization. It's a natural process that's happening here, and you can absolutely sharpen that right off, and the pencil's fine. But the problem is, is that the swatches and the work I've produced with them are also doing the same thing over time. Right, so hopefully you were able to see by that close-up that I can almost scratch that right off with my fingernail. This isn't so unusual really to see. I mean, I've seen it in a less severe kind of way with other color pencils, but never to this degree. Like, I've never seen it quite that much, and I saved these pencils intentionally so that I could show you. I can scrape that kind of frosting, and again, it's so hard to show. I'm calling it frosting, but it's like a fog of oxidization. I can scrape it sort of right off this drawing as well that these swatches have been here for about a, about a year where it was really bad it was fogging over and affecting the value of the swatch so I took a little bit of alcohol or solvent in some instances and went over it and it removed it fine but then it came back um, that's kind of a concern for me because I sell my artwork and I don't want to hear from a client a year later, hey, something funky's going on with your uh, with your artwork. Like there's a fog over some of the darker values and the, yeah, that's not good. I've not had that experience with artwork. It, like I said, to some degree or another, I've experienced that a little bit on some of the polychromos pencils, not much but never on the Polychromos artwork or on the swatches. They remain true, they remained consistent. It, it's happening quite extensively with these. Now, to me, that is a disadvantage and it's something that you need to take into consideration and be mindful of with your artwork. I have a feeling that if I were to apply several layers of fixative over the top and seal it down and kind of isolate it as much as possible away from oxygen, that wouldn't be so much of an issue. But not everybody uses fixative and you might be somebody who doesn't. So let's take a look at this um, color selection. Other than the fact that some of the colors are quite muted, nothing is really super bright and popping. You know, it's not going to be as intensely bright as the polychromos, for example. Um, or here, here's, I, I just set this up, these paint swatches for a painting that I'm doing. This is like an azo yellow. Nothing here is coming close to being quite that bright either. Or even that blue is a good example. This is ultramarine blue. Do you see the fog? I wish you could see it, but there's like a, a, a coating over it. I don't like that. I'm just going to say that flat out. I don't like that, and I do think it's a disadvantage. Um, 
One of the things that I noticed, besides the sort of more muted color palette, which I actually like because it makes them more unique and more useful, and it makes my other collection of color pencils, these for example, more versatile, because I don't need really duplicates of colors that I already have. So if you already have a collection of pencils and you're thinking of adding this to it, it can really be an advantage to you, depending on how you look at it. But if you're investing in your first set of colored pencils, I am not certain you'd be happy with this. But another thing I notice is that if you squint your eyes and you look at this, there's a lot of very dark, um, mid to dark value colors. Everything's sort of hanging out on the same end of the value spectrum. There are a few pastel tones, which is nice. We have Heather, Wild Lavender, mid ultramarine, salmon, oyster, arctic. I like to see a light aqua, but it's very few and far between, very scarce, depending, uh, considering that this is a 100 set, even still, there's a lot of just kind of heavy mid to dark tone values. So there's not as much variety as you would anticipate with a 100 set, and I would have expected and liked to see. Now I will be inserting some footage of my unboxing video because I at that time had them in the 100 wood box set that they came in. It's a beautiful box, beautiful presentation, but I won't be distracted by that or by the sticker price um, while doing a review because what matters is the pencils, not how they're presented. Um, I actually chose to put my pencils in this um, organizer here because I'm going to reach for them so much more and they're so much more easily accessible to me when I can see them and they're all out like that versus in that wood box. It is a beautiful wood box, but it's just not practical for me as an artist personally. Now these pencils have been rated by both the ASTM and the Blue Wool Scale. That means that Derwent spent their money to send these out to be tested for light fastness and I highly respect that. That was one of the things that drew me into making this purchase. I, I value that a lot as a professional artist. I have to give them the credit for that and I'm so glad that they really spent the time were very dedicated here. They were very serious about the light fastness and that is a huge advantage and pro in the favor of these colored pencils. The other thing is is that when I take a look here in the brochure it came with, um, here's the light fast information as well as the pigment information. I know you can't quite see that right now, but let me go ahead and focus on that. So here, sandstone, it's PW6, PY42, and PY42 again. I don't know if that's a typing error or if they wanted me to know PY42 is in there twice. Not sure. And Persian orange, PR101, PV16, so on and so forth. Um, I really like that amount of transparency when it comes to a company. That means a lot to me, and it definitely works in their favor when it comes to these pencils. I think that is wonderful. The art material industry is grossly unregulated, and companies make claims that really they don't have to support or back up the information most of the time. I've come across this with, for example, those Winsor & Newton colored pencils, which I flat out returned. You know, they say, oh, light fast. Well, okay, well, tell me how they're light fast. Give me some proof or evidence. They can't do that. There's no ratings. There's no pigment information. And truthfully, I don't think they are light fast, the Winsor & Newton colored pencils. So not trying to crap on anybody, but... I feel like they make irresponsible claims they can't back up. And part of the problem with the unregulation is that there's no legal terms or legal definitions for how we can use certain terms like professional, artist grade, things like that. Like for example, with with food, you know, there's a certain there's a certain percentage of milk fat to blah 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 in order to call something cheese, legally call it cheese, or legally call something ice cream. You're not allowed to use those. A lot of the ice cream in the store now is a frozen dairy dessert product, right? But when it comes to art supplies, there's really nothing but integrity standing in the way of Crayola calling their cheap color pencils professional artist grade. Like there's no legal ramifications for that. There's no boundary because everything's so unregulated. I think things are starting to move in the right direction and get better. But when companies make claims, I really take them seriously and I want them to back that up with evidence. And in this instance, Derwent really has done that. So I'm really proud of them for that. I give them a lot of credit and I respect these pencils. Now, 
the consistency of this pencil. I had heard some people, another thing that had drawn me over, some people were comparing them to the Derwent drawing pencils. I disagree 100%. The Derwent drawings are definitely softer, they're thicker, more waxy, and um, at least the ones I had. But then I had heard that in recent years they reformulated them and they're harder now. So I now I'm not sure. Maybe the newer ones are more consistent to this. But the ones I have are definitely softer and creamier than these. These are softer than a polychromos, but certainly not as soft anywhere near as soft as a Prismacolor, which I like because Prismacolors, in my opinion, are just too soft most of the time for how I like to work. These will hold a point relatively well. They sharpen well and none of them have broken. Each of the pencils is going to have the name Derwent Lightfast as well as a color name and the Lightfast rating right on there. That's really important for a professional artist to have that information. No more information than that's what's necessary, but no less. And I really appreciate that. Out of the full 100 color set, one of my pencils did come a little bit wonky. I showed this to you guys in the unboxing video. I was like, is that been glued back together? Somebody had commented, no, that's probably the glue that binds the core to the wood. And because the pencil had split and was broken, the glue leaked out. And I have to agree with that commenter. I think that probably is what happened upon closer inspection. But this pencil is split like all the way. And so what I went ahead and did was I just purchased another one with my own money. Um, rather than contact the company and ask them for a replacement because I just, you know, I'd rather just buy my own and have it be done with. So let's go ahead and take a look down here at how they blend. I'm going to zoom you guys in. Now, I think these work okay with traditional solvents, um, but I've really moved away from things like Gamsol and odorless mineral spirits because I like to keep the entire product dry, the finished artwork dry start to finish. Um, that means something to me and I think that helps with the archivability of the product. So I've moved over to brush and pencil, colored pencil products and I have a full review on my channel that I'll link up if you're interested. So here what I did and these four pencils that I selected for these blends in each of these samples I used four different blending methods but they're all the same pencils. Amber Gold is the yellow to flame is the orange, scarlet, and then Derwent red. So I used four colors and the exact same colors each time. Here I used the Derwent blender pencil to blend out, which, um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of blender pencils, but I think it worked okay. One of the issues with blender pencils is that it's going to kind of remove the top layer products. So you can see that one's not as vibrant as the other sample. And then because you're burnishing it down, you can't add any more on top. Here I blended with just the pencils alone so that you could get an idea of how they blend just on their own. And it did all right, it did fine, but there's definitely, you can see more solid blocks of color. You can see more separation between the different values and shades. Here I use some of my favorite methods. This is the brush and pencil products with the textured fixative in between layers and I think that resulted in the most vibrancy and the most color saturation and a beautiful gradient blend. And here I used um, the brush and pencil powder blender on its own without using textured fixative which is also a wonderful result um, I feel. Now here I did the same thing, but I used different colors. And you can see this is important for, for a reason. Let me put this here to kind of white balance the camera a little bit. Oh, see how that changes things? Yeah. So I used four colors here. I used violet, wild lavender, heather, and oyster. Oyster is a great color. This is a part of the German artist line. Um, some of those tinted whites and tinted blacks, I was so happy to see them come back in this line. I recognized them. This is a great shade for blending out skin tones, for blending out pinks, and in this instant for blending out purples. Now, I didn't want to take this blend super dark to that dioxazin violet place that uh, the shade violet has, and I believe that is dioxazin violet. So I had to blend between these two colors, but still, 
that's a significant value jump. It really is. Now they blended great despite the fact that there's a really large value jump. So that's great to their credit. That means these pencils blend really well. But it's still a little bit of a challenge um, because I would have liked to have seen a color in between. Unfortunately, it just wasn't provided. There's, it, I mean, you go from this kind of decently light purple to a near black purple, like boom. There, see what I'm saying with the with the color selection? There's some gaps here, and in some instances that results in some pretty big value jumps. Still, I feel like I was able to overcome it. We created a whole new shade, and I got the look I wanted, but do you see how it's kind of gritty and grainy looking? Um, that's just the way that Wild Lavender and Heather sort of look, just in the swatches. They're a different texture than the others, and some of the pencils I do feel look a little gritty and grainy. So I actually um, made a little list here um, so we can go over those colors. But still, before I get to that, I will say that's a huge credit to these pencils. I was able to create a whole new color and still get the blend and the look that I wanted. So that is beautiful. So let me zoom out and kind of take a look here. Um, I'm trying to get the whole thing in shot, so that means I kind of have to get decently far away. So not all the colors in this um, spectrum performed the same. Some of them felt softer and more creamy, um, and then some of them were a little bit harder like a polychromos. So the first one I noticed was banana, and that also has that slightly grittier kind of look to it. Um, mustard was a little bit harder. Gold, again, less pigment. I had to work harder and more strain on my hand to get that one to come out. Um, it also was kind of weak in color and there was a lot more crumbs. Cinnamon, where's cinnamon? Cinnamon was another one and that's a flesh tone. That's where a Caucasian flesh tone. When you're blending with that, you don't want that to be gritty in any way. You'd want a soft, creamy, smooth feel for a flesh tone. Also felt like in general, the color palette didn't lend so well to portraits. Um, not a lot of portrait tones here. So cinnamon was that way. Salmon, look how weak that color is. Um, and I really pushed hard, you guys. This is a piece of bright white Arches Hot Press watercolor paper, by the way, if you're interested in the, uh, the substrate here, the support. Um, Mid Ultramarine, look at that. I didn't like that. I'm gonna zoom down on that one. You can kind of see it. Um, it. It was kind of thin and streaky. It definitely reminded me of Polychromos's Ultramarine. Um, didn't love that. Um, Vivid Green, I think, was another one that was sort of grainy and textured in a strange way. I felt like it, it built a little bit weird. And this Peridot Blue, perhaps, was another one. Um, but overall, with the exception of just those handful, the bulk majority of them were nice and soft and creamy and performed pretty well for me. Again, when I say soft and creamy, I don't want you to think um, Prismacolor, because they're not that soft. And we'll lay down some color right here live so that you can see that in real time, so we can kind of talk about it. So here I have Pacific Blue, which a color I thought really worked well. So I'll let you go ahead and screenshot that if you want, or pause the screen anytime you want to take a look at this color selection. Um, and also, how about I do this? How about I bring in the Polychromos color selection, which is 120 colors. But once again, that was another critique I had about these. I don't feel like there's any pastel tones here. So, um, you know, some of these lighter purples, they're a little streaky maybe and grainy, but like, look, light aqua, we don't have anything like that here. So at least they made an attempt at pastel tones in the light fast. And I understand, before you comment, it's hard to make p colored pencils um, light fast and pastel tones. I know that. I really do know that. So you take a look and compare the color selection there if you'd like. All right, so I went ahead and I grabbed a color from my collection, a polychromos, one that I love. This is Helio Blue Reddish 151, and I'm gonna directly compare it to Deep Blue uh, by Derwent Lightfast. No color numbers on these, which again, really doesn't bother me at all. Both are freshly sharpened, so we can get a really good idea. And the colors, I think, 
are very comparable. Once again, I put this bright colorful strip here to white balance the camera. So I'm going to first do the polychromos, which I love these colored pencils, and I would be very disappointed if uh, my light fast testing comes back and shows that they aren't as light fast as what they claim. I think we should all be angry about that if that be the case. Okay, here's deep blue, and I'm just going to apply the same pressure. These colors are very similar, and I'm going to do about the same number of layers. I think over there I did maybe three. So you can see right away, the color swatches honestly are about the same. This isn't just a lighter color. That's not what it is. It's that with the same amount of energy, time, and effort and pressure, I've put down less product with the polychromos. That is not a bad thing. It just simply means that these are harder. So I want you to have a frame of reference in terms of the texture, because that is a deal breaker for a lot of people. So if I push really hard, you know, I'm going to get the color really quick there. But I just want to show you for both, if I push really hard, you'll see that the color is about the same. It's a little bit lighter on the polychromos. But you're not going to be putting down the same amount of color as quickly. That's not to say you're not going to build up and get the same result. And it depends on how you like to work. If you like to work in more layers, um, you're going to love the polychromos. And I do love polychromos. I think these two color pencil brands blend beautifully together. But if you do have hand strength issues or arthritis, you know, that little bit of difference in how much harder these are will make a difference in how long you can color, how long you can create artwork and draw. And so I want you to have that information. All right, so overall, let me wrap this up. In conclusion, some of the pros of these pencils is that they are 100% light fast. Uh, the light fast rating is on every single pencil. This one happens to be a light fast of two. That means it's light fast of two in mass strength. Keep that in mind. Um, if you're diluting this or you're blending it with like this lighter blue or with a white, that will affect the light fastness. So keep that in mind. But I'm really impressed with the lengths that they went to to create these pencils and they are a far above and beyond improvement over some of the other things that are out there on the market right now. The consistency, you know, every now and then you're going to come across a scratchy pencil that's a little bit hard, but in general, they're pretty decently creamy. I'd say they're a medium uh, softness and texture. Now they're claiming these are an oil base, um, like the polychromos, but they're definitely softer, a little bit more toward the wax. There is no such thing as a pure oil pencil. So, you know, I've seen people say that about the polychromos, and that is just absolutely ridiculous. If it was a pure oil binder, it would come out like oil paint. Every pencil is a combination of oil and wax. Otherwise, it wouldn't be sharpenable. Um, some have more oil and some have more wax. It just depends on the, the balance of these two mediums. Um, however, there's no such thing as them being purely oil or purely wax. It's just not the case. Um, but these are more um, of an oil base and it's evident by how the oil sort of oxidizes on the surface of some of these pencils. I suspect that, again, if I sealed it with a few layers of fixative, allowing the layers to dry in between, that I'd, I'd deal with that less on the paper. Um, but definitely, I mean, in a lot of these swatches, I don't know how that'll show up on camera, but I can literally just start scraping off the wax. Um, and, and that kind of fog that happened, it developed over time. It wasn't instantaneous. It happened as it sat in my art room over weeks or month long periods that it started to oxidize on the surface and develop that film. So I don't, I don't like that. Who do I think these pencils are good for? I think they're good for professional artists. I think that they're good for any artist that's very serious about the archivability of their work and they want to make sure that it's here for generations to come. You don't have to be a professional artist, a professional, to really have passion for the work and care about what you're doing. And you deserve to work with the best pencils. Um, however, these are very expensive. And I think that if you're trying to choose between these and, for example, Luminance by Karen Dosh, I can't speak about the Luminance pencils quality just yet because I honestly have not tried them myself. 
but from what I can gather, I think that's the most close competitor to these, and I would probably choose whichever one is going to be more affordable in your area out of the two. They are good pencils, with the exception of a couple uh, scratchy ones. If you're a coloring book um, enthusiast, adult coloring book user, or just more of a casual drawer or artist, I don't think you need these. That's not to say you don't deserve them. If you would like to have them and invest the money in them and you could afford them, that's great. You know, it, you deserve to color with the best if that's what you would like to have, but certainly it's not necessary uh, for that type of an application. My honest suggestion to you guys would be to try a couple of these out open stock first since there is open stock availability and that's a huge plus but you would expect that with a brand by Derwent. Um, try them out first and see if you like them. Sample a couple colors and do it that way because you might find that they're not for you and you won't have invested so much money. And I would avoid the wood box. Honestly, it's a waste of money. Yes, it makes a beautiful gift and a great presentation, but that box is just sitting in storage now because it's not functional for me as an artist to use. I'm much more likely to use it if I can see it and have access to it on my desk. It takes up a lot of room. And if I wanted to get to, say, burnt sienna, I'm going to have to open the box, find a place to put the top tray, find a place to set the, the middle tray, and then finally get to that pencil. You know, I mean... I'm not going to do that most of the time. And you're spending more to get that wood box set. I do believe they have a 72 set and then they might have a set that will supplement to get you the rest of the way. I'm pretty sure they do. Or you can purchase open stock if that's what you'd like to do. And it would probably be still more affordable than that wood box set. And final, final thoughts on these. I like them. They are very creamy. They blend well with polychromos. They blend well with the methods I like to use and the, and you know, the brush and pencil products. But they're not perfect. They're not the best color pencils in the whole world. And I do feel like they were sort of overhyped on YouTube and in the art community as being the best thing ever without flaw and super perfect. They're not, you guys. They're really not. I haven't had any broken pencils. I would never expect that from Derwent. But like I said, there are a couple pencils like Banana, uh, Gold, Cinnamon, especially in these tones here, which are meant to be kind of your more Caucasian skin tones here. I want those to be soft and creamy. I want to be able to blend that super smooth and not have any grain, but uh, I don't, I feel like they're going to give me texture problems because they're harder and they're not as pigmented as they should be. The consistency there is not what I want for a portrait set. So before I ramble way too long, I wanted to get this review out there, but I have to say, I would give them an 8 out of 10. They're great, but they're not perfect. And um, if you can't afford these pencils or if you've been looking at them and it's going to be a big investment for you and you're not, if you're kind of feeling like, no, oh, I'm missing out on something, don't, don't, don't feel that way. Honestly, you don't need them. They're great, but they're not necessary to create beautiful pieces of artwork. Honestly, I do prefer polychromos. For how I like to work, I feel like I can get these transparent veils of color and I can really glaze and build a lot of depth with these. The work I create with these more mimics um, a fine art painting or a watercolor painting in some instances. And so I prefer these because I can really build and build and build and build and build and get the look that I just absolutely love. Um, despite the fact that they can give me hand paint issues, but I with this colored pencil powder blender, which is really not a blender as much as a dry lubricant, um, that eliminates that issue for me. So it's really a lifesaver in that regard. I like this color palette better. I like the effects I get with these better, and I think they blend better. But I don't know if I trust the light fastness on them anymore, so I'm going to have to check. Um, these are a great addition to those pencils. There's, there's really no overlap in color. But again, everything's kind of hanging out. Like, if look, take a look at these three rows here. These four rows, actually. The exception of these three, or maybe four, everything here is just so dark and desaturated. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of similar colors, too. Like, I don't think you need the full 100 set. For example, like pine and racing green, you don't need both of those. They're so close together. Um, mid blue and midnight blue, very similar. 
blue violet, nightshade, and violet. They're all hanging out in the same kind of value place. There's just a different undertone there, which is nice, but in a limited set, I would have preferred something in between, you know, versus that. Um, and this is not a limited set. I can't believe I just said that, but it, but it feels limiting. How is it that I have a 100 set in front of me, but it feels so limiting? But it does. Look at uh, dark cyan, dark indigo, uh, ocean blue, ocean violet, sort of real similar, these four colors here. You got dark turquoise, pacific blue, it's real similar. Uh, mid blue, midnight blue, real similar. Um, these two shades here are very similar. These three shades up here are kind of real similar. These two definitely. So, I don't know, somehow it, it does feel, and then, and then take a look at these four shades here. Even these five shades, do we, mm, you know what I mean? So, I, I just wanted to put that out there. So, I do like them, eight out of 10. I do recommend them if you can afford them, but try and use coupons. Don't pay full price for these and avoid that 100 wood, uh, wood box set because I don't think you need it. All right, so that wraps up my video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, leave me some comments. Um, and I'm, I'm open to discussions, but please be respectful in my comment section. And as always, have a great day and a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.